Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Vainan Gwissen, a postdoctoral research fellow at Stellenbosch University's Animal TB Research Group in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Today, my talk is entitled The Advances Towards Detecting and Preventing the Spread of Multispecies Disease Using Bovine Tuberculosis and as, ex as an Example. Thereafter, I want to introduce the Animal TB Research Group. I want to talk about the research we do, explain the importance thereof, and how we are trying to implement our work in a translational fashion in order to improve the health of people in South Africa. Hopefully some components of my talk will resonate with some and generate some interesting discussions. Today I'll use bovine tuberculosis caused by Mycobacterium bovis as an example of a zoonotic pathogen, a chronic zoonotic pathogen, just to highlight that chronic diseases are also, are also something to consider and not just acute. For the remainder of my talk, I'm going to switch off my video to save everybody some bandwidth. The Animal TB Research Group takes a multi-pronged approach to improving knowledge of the epidemiology, pathogenesis and immunology of bovine and other forms of animal tuberculosis. This includes investigating the role of host genetics and immunology in susceptibility to animal TB, the genetic diversity of mycobacterial pathogens and their impact on wildlife and livestock populations, the human-animal interface, ecosystem and the development of diagnostic technology for the use in multiple host species, particularly in South African wildlife. Our work incorporates a continuum of basic to applied research, both in the lab and in the field. Specific research areas include the investigation of novel biomarkers of infection and disease in wildlife, cattle and goats, the application of knowledge to improve diagnostic algorithms and understanding the comparative immunopathogenesis in different species. When considering a response to an epidemic, one should not only focus on acute diseases, but also consider chronic. Tuberculosis is a major global public health threat, with an estimated 10 million new cases reported globally in 2019. TB is the leading cause of death due to infection, infectious chronic disease in South Africa, and about 360,000 people develop this disease every year, with 217,000 of those having HIV, and 89,000 deaths per year. That's roughly 10 people per every hour. Zoonotic tuberculosis is a form of TB in people predominantly caused by the bacterial species Mycobacterium bovis, which belongs to the Mycobacterium tuberculosis complex. The implications of zoonotic TB go beyond human health. The organism is host adapted to cattle, where it is referred to as bovine TB, and it also causes TB in other animals, including various wildlife species. Bovine TB has an important economic impact and threat threatens livelihoods. In 2016, 147,000 new cases of zoonotic TB di were diagnosed and 12,500 human deaths were reported. It has been suggested that Mycobacterium bovis infection may account for as much as 30% of all TB cases in Africa, especially African countries where unpasteurized milk is consumed and usually misdiagnosed as an infection as an infection with Mycobacterium tuberculosis. It is not possible to clinically differentiate between infections caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis and Mycobacterium bovis. The most common form of TB in people caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis primarily affects the lungs, although up to one third of cases may be extrapulmonary. Zoonotic TB in people can also involve the lungs, but, is often, but it often affects extrapulmonary sites, including lymph nodes and other organs. The most frequent, frequently used laboratory procedures for diagnosing TB in people, such as sputum smear microscopy or the rapid molecular assay expert MTB RIF, cannot differentiate between M tuberculosis from M bovis. This means that zoonotic TB is underdiagnosed. Zoonotic TB also poses a challenge for effective patient treatment and recovery. M bovis is naturally resistant to perizinamide one of the four essential medications used in the current testing first-line anti-TB treatment regimes. As most healthcare providers initiate treatment without drug susceptibility testing results, patients with zoonotic TB may receive inadequate treatment. This may lead to poorer treatment outcomes and the development of further resistance to other anti-TB drugs. Resistance to additional drugs has also been detected in some embovis isolates. 
including rifampicin and isoniazid. Resistance to these two essential first-line medications is divine, defined as multi-drug resistance TB, which poses a major threat to human health globally. As with other zoonotic diseases, zoonotic TB cannot be controlled by the human health sector alone. Animal health and food safety sector must be engaged to address the role of animals in maintaining and transmitting Mycobacterium bovis. TB was present throughout Europe in the medieval times, and the disease in cattle appeared to be associated with the growing dairy industry by the 15th century. As European settlers migrated to South Africa, they brought their cattle and introduced bovine TB along with other animals. The first recorded case of TB in cattle in South Africa was in 1880. With ongoing importations of livestock from Europe, predominantly the UK, Australia and South America during the 19th and early 20th centuries, there were pro probably multiple introductions of this alien disease into the country. The advent of TB testing for important cattle resulted in the destruction of infected important cattle and recognition of the significance of the disease. In 1911, South Africa declared bovine TB as one of the first notifiable, notifiable livestock diseases. It is important to note that although most cases of TB in livestock and wildlife are due to infection with M. mycobacterium bovis, there are also a number of other organisms in the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex that affect a wide range of hosts, including humans. Currently, there are no validated tests for anti-mortem detection and differentiation between these isolates. Culture and speciation of these novel pathogens can be difficult, and the presence of these members can complicate the diagnosis of Mycobacterium bovis and may also cause infection in humans, like in the case for Mycobacterium pinapidi. However, for the purpose of this talk, we will focus on Mycobacterium bovis. Mycobacterium bovis has the widest host range, including domestic livestock, wildlife species such as lions, European badgers, white-tailed deer, and African buffaloes. The first South African wildlife cases of bovine TB were reported in the Greater Kudu and the Common Daiko in the Eastern Cape in 1928. Due to the concern about animals and public health, the bovine tuberculosis eradication scheme for cattle was implemented in South Africa in 1969. Although not considered a significant issue at the time, sporadic cases of bovine TB continued to be found in wildlife, with the first case in the Kruger National Park identified in an impala in 1967. Despite the successful reduction in bovine TB in cattle in South Africa to a prevalence of 0.04% by the early 1990s, a new threat was recognized in wildlife with the report of the disease in African buffalo herds in the Southern Kruger National Park in 1990. In Kruger National Park, the introduction of Mycobacterium bovis was suspected to have occurred through the transmission between infected domestic cattle living on the border of the park and buffalo. The spread of bovine TB to additional wildlife species was documented in the Kruger National Park from early as 1990s. These species included lions, cheetahs, greater kudu, baboons, leopards, warthogs, and banded mongooses. In Chisluwe and Bolozi Game Reserve in KwaZulu Natal, a similar spread of the disease to wildlife was recorded. The first case of bovine TB was diagnosed in the black rhinoceros in 1970. Buffaloes were found to be infected in 1986 with increased spread amongst herds. Lions, greater kudu, and bush pigs has also been shown to be infected since the 1990s. Additional TB cases in wildlife have been diagnosed on private farms and game reserves in South Africa. The emergence of TB in wildlife has created significant concern amongst conservationists, private, private game and cattle farmers, agriculture regulatory agencies, and the public health sector. There are large knowledge gaps regarding the role of different species in perpetuating or amplifying the impact of this chronic pathogen. Although the incubation period of the disease is unknown, wild animals appear to be able to harbor mycobacteria for months to years, like in the case for African buffaloes. As infection progresses, there is evidence that TB may decrease product reproduction and other fitness parameters. However, it may not significantly affect population numbers unless the animal experiences other stresses, such as drought or concurrent disease. This suggests that infected animal may remain in the population for extended periods, unlike in the case of acute diseases such as rabies or rinderpest, which results in rapid mortality. This confounds control measures for preventing the introduction of diseases or decreasing the transmission of diseases, especially in complex ecosystems. The direct effects of TB on wildlife have been documented. 
As an example, buffalo herds with a higher prevalence of bovine TB had worse body conditions and loss condition faster in the dry season than those of lower bovine TB prevalences. Although there was no observed impact on age structure in the study, the author suggested that affected buffaloes might be more susceptible to predation by lions. However, researchers found that chronic bovine TB in buffaloes in Shishluim Rosie Park was associated with decreased adult survival and a reduced population growth rate. Since chronic infection does not result in large-scale mort mortality or rapid changes in population structure, the effects on resilience to disease and other stresses may not become apparent for years. TB in some species may lead to high mortality and even to localized extinction of infected groups. This has been observed in banded mongooses in Botswana and meerkats in the Kalahari. In addition to the direct impact of these populations in the ecosystem, these animals are important prey items for other species and their loss may influence predator populations. The long-term consequences of wildlife TB in South Africa are unknown. A group of experts conducted a workshop in 2019 to model the impact of bovine TB on lion populations in Kruger National Park. The simulations covering the next 50 years showed that bovine TB was likely to cause an overall decrease in lion populations before stabilizing. Since the Kruger National Park is one of the remaining strongholds for lions in South Africa, this scenario suggests a serious threat to the survival of this species. With diminishing habitats, there are increased wildlife, livestock, human interfaces and a growing threat of infectious disease transmission. In 2017, recognition of zoonotic TB as a neglected disease has led to the publication The Roadmap for Zoonotic TB. In the roadmap, they say that the human burden of disease cannot be reduced without improving the standards of food safety and controlling bovine TB in all animal reservoirs. A one-health approach recognizes the interdependence of the health of people, animals and the environment and the engagement of all relevant sectors and disciplines. Breaking the chain of transmission at the animal-human interface in places like South Africa requires an interdisciplinary approach involving social and medical sciences to create a novel strategy for rural areas at risk. This means addressing the disease not only in communal livestock, but all animal hosts, including wildlife. Unfortunately, we are not completely there yet. In South Africa, despite the successful reduction in bovine TB in commercial livestock, the prevalence in communal cattle, and that's defined as cattle not restricted to a single property, and other livestock like domestic goats are unknown. Communal livestock often share boundaries and resources with wildlife from areas known to be endemic for bovine TB. A consequent risk of spill over then occurs. With no current surveillance and compensation programs for zoonotic TB in these livestock herds, livestock owners have no pre perceived incentive to test or cull infected animals. Mycobacterium bovis infections in animals are considered to be spillover from other species. In contrast, there are species that are known maintenance hosts of TB, including Mycobacterium bovis in African buffaloes and possibly in the greater kudu and lions. Maintenance hosts are species in which the infection can persist without introduction from an external source. The presence of multiple susceptible hosts complicates the management and control of TB since the maintenance of infection will be affected by the interaction of different species, variable susceptibility, the influence of environmental factors such as temperature and feed and water availability, and the ability of the pathogen to persist in the host and the environment. This is what the Animal TB Research Group is all about, improving scientific evidence. However, there's challenges that we face while conducting such research, some of which are the lack of validated diagnostic tests that's species specific, logistics of sample collection, better understanding the pathogenesis and epidemiology in terms of susceptibility, routes of infection, disease progression, and interactions at interfaces. And there's also some complications around the treatment and control of diseases like zoonotic TB in South Africa. Research programs are continually being developed to investigate various aspects of TB in wildlife. One of the key areas is the exploration of the different hosts' immune responses and the development of diagnostic tests, especially for wildlife species. Ongoing projects include identifying anti-mortem novel biomarkers of infection and disease, routes of transmission, 
and effects of co-infections. For example, feline immunodeficiency virus infection in lions and also developing and validating techniques for improved indirect and direct detection of mycobacterial organisms in species such as rhinos, African buffaloes, lions, warthogs, and greater kudu, amongst others. With the advent of new techniques and species-specific tools developed by our group to detect M. bovis infection in wildlife, our understanding of wildlife PTB continues to evolve every year. To date, 24 wildlife species in South Africa have been confirmed infected with Mycobacterium bovis, with the majority of these species identified within the last decade. Over the years of conducting research in various wildlife species, it became really apparent that the clinical and pathological presentations varies between each species. These observations may also largely be due to the different type of interactions that may, be, may occur between animals. For example, direct contact between species, contaminated environments, and then also shared habitats where animals live closely together, as well as close contact within groups of animals. Currently in South Africa, control programs aimed at reducing transmission between humans and animals are based on eradication of infected animals. Unfortunately, control programs aimed at eradicating infected animals has a negative economic and social impact on animal owners, especially farmers in rural communities. It leads to international trade restrictions and also negatively impacts conservation programs for wildlife aimed at improving biodiversity. These programs often only cover cattle, with only some countries, including a few wildlife species. So if TB testing and eradication is only implemented for some species, how can it then be controlled? TB control programs in the USA, Australia, and many other countries in Europe have been effective in eradicating or at least reducing disease. However, this was very costly, required political and stakeholder buy-in, as well as ongoing surveillance programs to maintain control. To answer the question, how can the prevention of the spread of animal disease be improved? Well, from our experience of bovine TB, I think we need to continue generating scientific evidence strengthen intersectoral and collaborative approaches, engage stakeholders, increase the awareness, and develop policy and guidelines together. So in a nutshell, we need evidence-based priorities for addressing TB across all hosts tailored to the needs of specific countries. The research we do would be impossible in isolation, and all our research over the past years were done in collaboration of various stakeholders. Our group would like to sincerely thank the following people, funding bodies and institutions for their continued support of our research.